Well, how is it going, y'all? I got uh, a little bit more of kind of an experimental kind of thing going on here. Um, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about stonewashing, uh, because I've kind of gotten into that a little bit. And uh, kind of want to just uh, talk my mind on it a little bit as I've uh, had some experience with it. So, the uh, the first knife that I tried to uh, do the uh, stonewashing on was this guy. Um, all of the ones that I've done so far are Tucson, but, you know, obviously it's not exclusive to them. They're just the ones that I've done so far. Um, and this one you've probably seen me complain about uh, a little bit. And, yeah, you can still see it a little bit. Uh, this one is absolutely scratched to hell and back. Both kind of on the front and back. So I wanted to uh, kind of give this a little bit of a stone washing so that it would uh, kind of blend in. And, well, it did a little bit. This is actually a little lighter of a stone wash than uh, I would have wanted. Uh, I also didn't do anything to try to address the uh, the scratches up here, except for um, on my uh, work sharp uh, Canadian blade grinding attachment. I basically took the uh, the the ninety degree perpendicular up and down sort of thing, slapped it up there. And just kind of did a, a single pass on there with uh, one of the uh, the finer belts. And that, uh, you know, hid the scratches a little bit, but it really wasn't enough. Um, if you are going to be dealing with uh, some of that stuff, you'll probably want to uh, do a little bit of finessing on the blade before you, you go ahead and do that. So, this one I am planning on uh, doing a little bit more to. Uh, the next one that I had up here, this is a night morning design that I had uh, a little bit uh, of scratches going on. It wasn't quite as extreme as this one, but uh, yeah, it was still there. Yeah, you can kind of a little bit maybe still if you're very much trying to see sort of those guys going on there. Um, but yeah, with this one, I actually uh, had taken... Some uh, worn out belts from my uh, <laughs> from my uh, work sharp to be able to uh, you know scratch that up and everything. Uh, first off, I started with the uh, the one twenty or well, this is a P one hundred, but because this was a an aftermarket one, but uh, you know a hundred or a hundred and twenty grit, um, way too coarse. You don't need to worry about that at all. So uh, excuse me. Uh, so yeah, I would not suggest kind of doing uh, starting off with that. And uh, actually, when I'm looking at it, I would probably want to pretty much get rid of these and basically start with uh, you know a a fine belts or uh, sanding kind of thing. Overall, this is the X4 fine, which I don't remember exactly what. Um, what grit that turns into, uh, but it's fairly fine. Um, and I would probably want to um, finish that up with some sort of scratch bright. You can either use a pad, which uh, I do have some of those, but this constantly sits on my desk, so uh, that's what I was going to grab for here. Uh, I have different, you know, grits available, and that's probably fine for most of your steels, especially these that are 14C28N that are fairly easy to scratch in the first place so that's kind of why i'm here so yeah i would say you would probably want to kind of rough this guy up a little bit um generally you don't want to go in a single direction because that's going to be very visible so i ended up doing some swirls around there as well as back and forth and whatnot and uh yeah it worked out pretty darn well overall um I really like how it looks, uh, you know, it's got that nice kind of look to it, and uh, I did try to mask off uh, the, uh, the dark portions of this, since this does have kind of a bit of uh, black stuff going on on uh, kind of the edges and the spine of the blade, but uh, it actually didn't uh, do too badly on there, so if, you know, you actually have a coating that's uh, worth a darn rather than just kind of paint, then uh, you probably won't have a whole lot to worry about which is uh, fantastic. Uh, as you can uh, see over here on this one as well, uh, the uh, the kind of uh, 
burned insignias on on the blade here are still visible, but uh, you know they are taken down a little bit. But yeah, it doesn't absolutely wipe them out, and uh, I do appreciate that quite a bit. This is another one that I did, um, and this one had no problems or scratches on it whatsoever. I just wanted it to be stone washed. Uh, yeah, this is a night morning one in 14C 28N as well, and uh, yeah, I think it looks quite, quite nice. Um, now what I will say with uh, these is um, this is just a natural stone washing. Uh, a lot of people online really prefer to acid etch and then stone wash the blades. And uh, you can do that acid etching in uh, a different myriad of, uh, you know, acids and whatnot, even including you could soak it in vinegar for a bit. And they're just kind of looking to uh, get the blades darker so that that contrast is a little bit more. And, you know, that's neat, and I might try that if I find some blades that uh, I think I would personally like to see benefit from something like that. But I, I kind of personally like the, uh, the standard uh, just stone washing on the steel myself. Does a great job, looks great, uh, hides scratches, all that sort of stuff. And, well, here's another couple of them that I've done. Kerchunk. This uh, Jelly Jerry design is uh, quite large. This was the most recent one that I've done. And certainly something that you'll have to keep in mind, which is very much common sense, is um, these things get super dull when you, when you uh, stonewash them because, well, the, the stones are going to go all the way up against... Every part of it, every part of it, including uh, the very, very brittle edge. So yeah, this thing has nothing on it right now. Uh, that being said, they're fairly easy to uh, bring back into uh, shape afterwards. This one I also haven't resharpened up afterwards, but uh, some of them I have, and it's uh, very, very easy to do so because well, you already have that. Uh, bevel and everything established. It just kind of knocks down that edge a little bit, so it's fairly easy to bring back. Yeah, so how did I go about doing some of this stuff? Uh, I originally tried a couple of things. Um, for one, I'm not super into the whole idea of taking a giant jar throwing everything in it, wrapping it in a towel, and throwing it in the uh, in your clothes dryer. Uh, for me, that sounds um, just awful for the dryer. And uh, the, they're not super cheap appliances. Like, you know, if you wanted to uh, purchase one specifically for that, then, you know, more the merrier. But, hey, I don't want to break appliances. So I didn't want to go that route. Um, so at first I did have a, a plastic container and I got some uh, ceramic media, uh, tumbling media or whatnot. I got about three pounds, um, which, uh, yeah. And I ended up, uh, basically you'll take the knife apart, um, and you will uh, toss that blade into there along with that and a little bit of water and, uh, shake the living crap out of it. Something that I have kind of noticed as uh, I was just playing, kind of playing around with it a little bit is um, if you are worried about, uh, you know, your pivots getting uh, a little gritty or messed up or whatnot, um, something you can do is uh, you can use kind of a, a padding material of some sort. Um, I found that this stuff works really fantastic. This is... Um, ceramic fiber tape. Uh, it's used a lot in the electronics industry, especially on laptops and whatnot. But it's just basically a, uh, you know, a heat resistive uh, tape made out of uh, ceramic fibers. There you go. And uh, it does a pretty good job of uh, holding on to things. So, I'll just pop this guy open real quick come on buddy 
You can do it. There we go. There's at least that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, as you can see on this one in particular, I did actually mask off uh, that area. So this actually isn't stone washed. And it's because I basically took some of this and just wrapped it over the, uh, the end there. Uh, I did that because, yeah, I was kind of worried a little bit about um, the... Uh, the, uh, the bearing race for the uh, the liner there, and also the inside here. Now, depending on the size of your rocks that you're actually using for it, um, you generally won't have to worry so much with uh, ball bearings as long as uh, they're inset into the knife itself, as I've done on uh, some others like this one that has that same sort of thing where I didn't mask it off at all. And, uh, yeah, they couldn't quite get in there very much to uh, do anything at all. So there is certainly that to, uh, you know, keep in mind. But you might want to do that if you're doing this on a knife that uses a phosphor bronze washers or something like that. But uh, yeah, this does deteriorate over time, but it has held up for... Uh, for a, uh, a whole tumbling session sort of thing. So, like I said, I started out with uh, ceramic media. Um, and actually, hold on one moment. I didn't think about this beforehand, but uh, yeah, I do have them handy. So uh, this is the uh, the ceramic media that I had first started out with. You know, obviously ceramic is uh, harder than steel. So it will actually uh, mark them up and whatnot. And uh, I don't remember exactly what these were, like 7 sixteenths or something like that. But yeah, they're just kind of little jagged pellets and whatnot. And uh, I found they weren't being super effective. So, my next thought was, uh, well, we got a whole bunch of rocks out in our garden. So, uh, I just went out there and grabbed a whole bunch of them. Now, these actually look like they have some sort of granite in there. But, uh, you know, just whatever I had that was uh, around this kind of shape and size, uh, I figured... Hey, that'll work just fine. So I grabbed, you know, a good amount, a few pounds or something like that. Um, and yeah, I put that in this guy. This is, you know, just one of those uh, kind of beef jerky container kind of things. And uh, yeah, just toss the knife in there with a little bit of water and uh, shook it up a bit and noticed that, yeah, it was working a little bit better. However, uh, it it became apparent to me that most people usually say, yeah, shake it for 15, 20 minutes. And I did, and it was very, very light. Um, like, you could notice it, but you really had to get your eyes up to it to be, uh, be able to see that. So, my next thought was, well, let me buy a rock tumbler. Um, and... They can be had for different price points or whatnot. I kind of picked up a middle-of-the-road one. Um, I think after some sales and discounts and whatnot, it was about 100 bucks. Uh, it was, was from a company called Tumblebee. And what I did like about it was the canisters were actually uh, a little bit longer um, because it held four pounds rather than three pounds, which is kind of normal for the uh, the smaller-sized ones. And uh, it's great. The uh, the canister itself will fit a blade up to six inches or so. So that's great for basically any folding knife. But, uh, you know, if you are looking for um, doing uh, fixed, blades, fixed blades, especially longer ones, um, then that might not exactly be the thing that uh, does it for you. So what I did... With this one, which was the first one that I had uh, really finally done that, was uh, I ended up kind of tossing it in there for, I think it was like 45 minutes. And uh, 
Yeah, I pulled them out and, uh, well, because the uh, stones were new and from outside, there was a whole bunch of uh, mud and grit and everything that I ended up pouring out. But uh, it's actually subsided now that I've used them quite a few times and they're nice and clean. So, uh, yeah, that's, um, that's super awesome. But, uh, yeah, I did that and then I ended up uh, tumbling with the, uh, the ceramic media for a little bit after that. And uh, I did notice that at least with the uh, ceramic media stuff that I have um, that I had shown you earlier, those little tiny white pellets, um, they don't really mark up the blade too much as like the stone washing kind of thing. But they do end up doing a little bit of nice fine polishing uh, on the blade afterwards. So they usually say, you know, it restores luster or something like that. Um, so yeah, um, now that I've actually done that, got it back together and sharpened it, and I realized, hey, I can do this one better. So with uh, a lot of the other ones that I've done here, um, I've actually kind of gone a little bit above and beyond by tumbling it with rocks for basically about two and a half or three hours. And uh, yeah, that will actually get you that uh, those nice patterns. And yeah, it, it certainly won't um, fully wear out the... Um, the, uh, the brazed logos on your blades or anything like that, but uh, they will make them a little bit more difficult to see. But I would do that, and then I will take 20 or 30 minutes to uh, tumble it with the, the ceramic media afterwards, because when you tumble it that long, you can actually feel... Um, it feels slightly gritty. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's, you know, unpolished or anything, but... It's a little bit noticeable, and when you just toss it in there with the uh, the ceramic media, that kind of takes care of that. Um, and uh, the end result, I like quite a bit. Especially with um, these 14C28N blades. That um, It's great steel, but um, it's, uh, it's pretty prone to scratching. I haven't done it with... Um, steals outside of I lie I lie <laughs> because uh, this one that I did uh, is actually in D2 so it works fine on D2 as well and at least with D2 you also don't need to worry if you're tumbling it for like three hours in water um, it's semi stainless and there was absolutely no rust or anything like that on the blades but I have heard if you are going to try to do that with a uh, a full carbon steel blade, 1075, 1095, um, A2, any of that sort of stuff. You probably want to replace that water with a, a squirt or two of a WD-40, which um, is probably a good idea for those. But for a lot of rock tumblers, I don't really like... Um, the idea of uh, WD-40 coming in contact with basically these rubber cylinders because, well, WD-40 has some solvents in there and I think it will probably kind of deteriorate it over time. So there you go. You might want to do that by yourself um, manually or, you know, do the clothes dryer trick that everyone seems to think is a great idea for, um, for carbon steel blades. But uh, yeah. So I have done 14C28N and D2, uh, which is great. And both of those work fine. Uh, I have not done something like um, uh, M390 or S90V yet. Um, I actually kind of want to on uh, a, uh, uh, a Mazwan Mokhtar uh, slip joint because I have the M390 and the S90V variant of it. And so I do want to kind of make them uh, a little bit different apart uh, outside of uh, some titanium anodization that I've already done on them. But uh, yeah, it could be interesting. And uh, I'm interested to see how um, some really, really tough steels will do with that. Uh, that being said, I technically also have a knife in uh, CPM M4 which is this guy. But as I've done the uh, the cut test on before, I've proven that uh, the hardness on this thing is not up to the task. So it's not, 
it will, you know, it has a bit of wear resistance on there, but it's not going to be hard enough for it to uh, be a challenge. So that's not really what's going to be going on with any of that. But, uh, yeah, that's what I've got going on with um, stone washing, at, at least at the moment. Uh, like I said, if I do feel the need to um, kind of darken some blades to uh, get a little bit more uh, contrast or, uh, heck, even a, um, a, a black wash kind of uh, finish, I think that's a trademark of Kershaw. But, uh, you know, still that sort of same thing, then, uh, you know, I will experiment a little bit more with uh, acids and whatnot. I'll probably try vinegar first of all because, uh, well, hey, it's easy enough to get. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've heard people even using up to muriatic acid, which I think might be a little overkill, but, uh, you know, um, but I've also been thinking of, um, picking up some ferric chloride, which also can do some etching on there as long as you're very careful and, uh, do it pretty quickly and whatnot, and of course be in ventilated area. But I also want to uh, try some of the uh, flame anodization um, stuff with uh, titanium, which basically you uh, torch these sun's bitches up with a uh, propane torch up to the point where uh, you can actually see them um, starting to uh, actually give off their own heat or glow a little bit and then dunk it to uh, douse it in the uh, the ferric chloride as a, uh, a different way of anodizing them rather than just using electricity. And that kind of gets that that crazy blues and purples with the uh, lightning kind of effects out there. So I'm interested in trying that on a couple. Uh, whenever I, uh, you know, actually get around to uh, picking up a propane torch and some ferric chloride and whatnot. But uh, yeah, so uh, at that point I'll probably try and... Um, Edge some stuff. Something that uh, you probably would notice is um, you'll have to do the etch first because it will actually etch enough away to um, remove a lot of the uh, the stone washing that you'd already had on there. So you really want to darken the blade and then do the stone wash. Otherwise, you're just working against yourself there. So yeah, those are kind of my thoughts and everything that I have on uh, stone washing so far. Uh, I really like the look of a stone wash blade. Um, it is basically my favorite finish on them. Uh, you know, satin is uh, a neat, but it's also kind of, uh, like it's the easiest way to uh, kind of get that done because you basically have it on the belt that you're uh, shaping it down to. So you just leave that finish on there. And, uh, you know, mirror polishing can be neat, I guess, but um, it picks up so many fingerprints and scratches are so so obvious on it it's kind of bothersome uh i do like the uh the rustic uh look of a stone watch which is why i've kind of played around with it a little bit these were the uh the first batch but probably not going to be the last ones to uh have that on there but uh yeah i can't really think of uh anything else that um I have going on in my mind about this. I just kind of wanted to get my uh, thoughts and everything out about uh, what I've gone through here and, you know, learning a little bit. So I guess the recap, since this uh, video has been a little bit long, is um, if you have scratches on the blade, you're going to want to try to uh, buff those out a little bit before you start. And you're going to want to do that in an irregular fashion. Um, you know, either using a, a fine, fine sandpaper or whatnot. Um, it's going to be more forgiving than, uh, you know, a bench stone or something like that. And uh, possibly Scotch-Brite um, to just kind of uh, ease a lot of that sort of stuff up and make it uh, a little bit more random. And you want to um, tumble that around or shake it by hand uh, with uh, basically thumb-sized rocks. You know, that one's probably on the bigger side, but, uh, yeah, so you'll, uh, shake or tumble that around for a couple hours. Um, I, I do about three just to make sure that it's, uh, you know, nice and, um, nice and visible, but, uh, you could probably get away with, um, as little as like an hour, hour and 15 minutes or something like that. 
And then just to uh, kind of restore a little bit of the uh, the luster back to the blade, uh, I'll tumble it a little bit with um, with this here uh, tiny ceramic media to just kind of polish it up a little bit. Uh, then you can slap your knife back together and um, then sharpen it because obviously you just rubbed it all along a whole bunch of rocks for several hours. So you don't have any edge whatsoever left on there. So yeah, I mean, it, it's a, it's one of those knife mods where, hey, if you don't like knife sharpening, you probably shouldn't bother with that because you are going to guarantee the whole knife is completely dull and you start over. But it's not super difficult to uh, sharpen a knife. There's plenty of great options for uh, sharpening things rather quickly these days. So uh, yeah, if you do like the look, I certainly suggest you go for it. Um, some knives are going to be a little bit easier than others. Uh, spider Co's, I, I would be a little hesitant because they're, um, a little weird with their, well, they're a little weird with their warranty in general, but if you take a knife apart, um, that supposedly, um, invalidates their warranties, which, um, it's kind of antiquated. I kind of understand where they're coming from, from, you know, having a whole bunch of people just sending knife parts back in a box and they're, you know not complete and whatnot, but at the same time, you should stand behind your product, man. You know, it's good. <laughs> so yeah, that and, uh, you know, lockbacks and, uh, slip joints are, uh, difficult to reassemble. So, you know, think twice about, uh, kind of tearing one of those apart if you want to do that. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of what I got going on so far there. And, uh, Hopefully I do uh, improve and kind of uh, figure out some more things um, to uh, help improve the uh, the process over time. Because uh, I certainly do like to uh, learn a lot of this stuff. So, yeah. All right. That's all I got to say. So, uh, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching. And uh, I hope you have yourself a wonderful stonewashed rest of your day, yo.